Hello everyone and welcome back to Studio 4. Uh, today's tutorial will be more of a beginner's tutorial for people trying to get started in Digital Performer 9. Uh, so today we'll be discussing uh, creating a new project and getting your studio set up to communicate with Digital Performer 9. Alright, so go ahead and open DP9. Wait for it to load, and you'll see the welcome window. Now, um, if you have any recent projects, they'll be showing up in the list here under Recent. Um, and if you're creating a new project, you can click on this blue bar here, and it will give you a list of templates to choose from. Uh, so if you know something exactly that you're looking for, 16 mono, 16 stereo, 32 MIDI, 48 auto, so on, uh, so on and so forth, then uh, this is a good place for you to start. If uh, you're not going to be using any of those things in particular, go ahead and click New and leave the template at empty. Uh, I will be going ahead and opening a project I created for this called DP Tutorial. And if you create a new project, it will come up and look something like this. Now, if it doesn't look exactly like this, that's okay. You'll notice at the top there are several windows to choose from, mixing board, quick scribe, MIDI, drum, sequence, tracks. Uh, and you can select any of those that apply to what you're working on. You'll notice that the window changes. Uh, right now, we're going to go ahead and leave this on tracks. The first thing that we're going to do in this tutorial, once we have this project, is set up our MIDI controller. So uh, if you go to the top toolbar under the Setup menu and go down to Configure Audio System, no, excuse me, Open Audio MIDI Setup. Now, if you're on a Mac, this will actually open uh, the Macintosh's uh, audio and MIDI setup. This isn't Digital Performer's window, this is actually the Macintosh. Go up to Window, Show MIDI Studio, and you'll notice over here a uh, list of my connected MIDI devices. And you'll see that uh, the Mac recognizes my MPK Mini, so I'll select that and say and click Test Setup, and I'll type a few keys on my keyboard, and you'll notice that an incoming signal is being received. So we'll go back to Digital Performer. Now we know that the computer is connected to the the MIDI controller, and now we need to make sure that Digital Performer is receiving that signal as well. So click on your Digital Performer tutorial, and click on the Project drop-down menu. We'll use this quite a bit. Uh, the project menu is your friend. Click Add Track, MIDI Track, and you'll see that a MIDI track comes up in, in the Tracks window here. And we'll go to our Mixing Board window, and all we want to do, you'll notice that this is Record Enabled. When you create a new track, it becomes Record Enabled. And I'll tap on my keyboard, and you'll notice that there's some signal coming in. And we're not hearing any sound yet because we haven't set it up to play anything, but for the moment we just want to make sure that we are receiving a MIDI signal. Alright, with our MIDI setup we're also going to set up our audio. Now go back to your setup window, go down to Audio System, Configure Audio System, excuse me, and click Configure Hardware Driver. This is where if you have an interface or a digital mixer with an interface plugged into your computer, it will show up uh, and you can select what digital performer is going to be communicating with. Uh, for example, you can just use the built-in input and output on your computer. I have a little Scarlett 2i2 and that's what I'll be using, uh, but I also don't have any studio monitors hooked up to that, so I'm just going to use my computer speakers for my main outputs. Select your interface, click OK. And we're also going to go to the Studio drop-down window and click Bundles. This is kind of Digital Performer's um, digital patch bay, if you will. Make sure that everything is incoming and, and outgoing as it should. So here you'll see my inputs. Now that we've set up our, our hardware, it's communicating with the Scarlett 
we have input one and input two on mono. But maybe I want to have some stereo audio channels coming through. So I can click the add button here, and you'll notice I get another mono with the Scarlet 2i2. And if I click this drop down and hit stereo, it recognizes both inputs as left and right, and we have a stereo channel set up. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this because um, there are other ways to approach this, and I'll show you those in a second as we test our audio setup. So let's go back to project, add track, and we'll hit stereo audio track. And here's my new audio track, audio one, and right now it doesn't have any inputs. So we'll click over here in the input column, and it's automatically checked for none. And if we hit new stereo bundle, you'll notice that Scarlet 2i2 shows up in the list. I'll click on that and create that bundle. Now if I create a new stereo audio track, I don't have to click new stereo bundle because it has already created that bundle and actually put that in our bundles patch bay. If you go back to studio and click bundles, remember we deleted this stereo bundle, but when we created a new one over here in the tracks, uh, it showed up in our bundles. So the great thing about Digital Performer is there are a number of ways um, to approach things and get your setup ready. Let's make sure that our incoming audio um, is being received. Let's create a mono, a mono audio track, and we're going to be using input one. Let's go to our mix board. We will no longer be recording on MIDI, and we are on. Mono for audio three here. If I click the record button and we'll see, yep, my microphone is connected and I am actually receiving audio in Digital Performer. So now you're ready to record MIDI and you're ready to record audio. Uh, let's also discuss uh, setting up your your actual interface here, your, your windows that you're going to be working with. Cool thing about Digital Performer is it allows you to have a lot of open windows at the same time within the same window, if you will, sub windows. Um, if you go to the very, very bottom, you'll see there's a black dot right in the middle. And when you scroll your mouse over it, there's a double ended arrow with a plus sign. If you click on that and move, you'll notice that you've created another window to watch simultaneously. And this can be on a different menu here. If I have my mixing board on the bottom and my tracks on the top, I like to keep my sequences on the top so I can see what my MIDI and waveforms are doing and my mixing board on the bottom. Not only that, but you can keep adding windows and keep tiling them from the bottom and adjusting once they're created the size that they want to be by, by grabbing those little dots. And there are a number of things to be watching while you're recording. And so if you go to the side, you'll notice there's another little black dot in the center-ish. My mouse is over here off to the left. And by clicking on that double arrow again on the dot, I can create side windows. Not only on the left, but on the right. And there are many things that you can be putting in these tileable windows. Uh, and those on the side can also receive more windows from the bottom and you can have as many monitoring windows as you need for the project that you're working on. Okay. Now you might be thinking, goodness, I don't need all of those and that's okay. If you've got too many windows or a digital performer loaded too many for you, there's a little X next to each um, tab and you can just click on that and it cancels all of those windows making it easier for you to work. So let's go back to the tracks menu. And I'll delete these tracks. Now say you have um, a certain project template that you would like to keep. You know, there was a drop down menu, but maybe you don't need 16 mono and 16 audio or 16 MIDI tracks um, that are presets for you. Maybe uh, the projects you work on are only five MIDI and 
five stereo channels. So we'll go back to project and click. We're going to add a MIDI track, but if I, there's some shortcuts up here. So if I use those, it'll be easier to create. We'll, we'll do control shift or excuse me, command shift M for MIDI tracks and command shift S for stereo. And I'll add five MIDI tracks and five stereo tracks. And there they are. And that's what we want to see come up. That's what maybe you want to see come up if uh, you work on this type of project a lot or for whatever reason. You can save your own templates to call on. Once you have this ready, you can go up to File, Save as Template, and it will ask you the name of your template. We'll say 5 MIDI, 5 Stereo. And if I hit OK, then the next time we go to open a, or create a new project, that 5 MIDI, 5 Stereo template will pull up from that drop down menu in the welcome screen of DP9. So there's your first tutorial if you're getting started in Digital Performer. If you enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you in coming tutorials. Thank you very much.